So, good evening, everyone. Um, so, she introduced um, uh, my, wo my work and uh, my uh, activities. So, um, uh, I wanted to do a presentation about my approach uh, using uh, Touch Designer and using like generative, generative content. I don't think that technically like it's very like uh, advanced compared to other people that uh, work more into like uh, deep coding and things like this. But even though like if my uh, work installation looks different from each other, I think the approach is very like the same. So I just wanted to explain a bit uh, how I uh, approach uh, a concept and how I build uh, my installation and uh, from, um, from uh, uh, for generative uh, artwork. So I'm very like interested in generative um, uh, images since uh, a long time now. I did a master in digital art in Barcelona in uh, 2003 and 2004, where I studied like sound and images. And uh, I was very like inspired by this book from this uh, philosopher that died recently, Umberto Eco, that uh, wrote this, uh, this book called uh, L'Oeuvre Ouverte, the, uh, La Obra Aberta. So he designed that a system that offers a creative act of improvisation. So a system is not fixed and remains for the performer a field of possibilities to exploit uh, according to the sensitivity. So I'm very much like uh, into this kind of um, concept when I uh, do my work. I really like uh, adding like a lot of randomness and uh, using data and using like uh, different things to uh, give life to my system. Uh, it's more about like uh, a living architecture that can be also like surprising me as a creator. So I like like this kind of happy error where, where the system can be constantly changing and and also like I have a lot of uh, emotion into it. So I just wanted to show you like the first uh, project I did uh, now like uh, in 2004. It was my uh, final year project. It was called Alive. Uh, it was an interactive system for audiovisual performance that combines uh, dynamically visual and sound in real time. Uh, in this project, the music is processed by a virtual ecosystem where different microorganisms interact between each other. Uh, they get born, reproduce themselves, and die, and the events generated by those microorganisms and the action and movement are co converted into uh, musical compositions. So the idea was to introduce uh, an ecosystem with two microorganisms at the beginning, a male and a female, and they were generating like MIDI event uh, according where they were placed in the space. And when they were eating, uh, eating each other, they were creating a third piece, which also had the same like uh, uh, musical identity. And up to 20 like uh, pieces, they were actually uh, changing like a... Uh, um, So they had like the different like visual uh, MIDI notes, and uh, they were like third uh, microorganism that could uh, eat them, and we uh, we start refresh the system to make evolve the musical compositions. So that was uh, my fi final year project, and uh, the, it was done with director Lingo, and uh, since then the technology evolves. Uh, one other project I did uh, like uh, in 2016 uh, for Ars Electronica was uh, called Flow. Uh, in Ars Electronica, they have this uh, space called the Deep Space uh, with a 15 meter by 8 meter like a projection. And the same on the floor with a laser that can track the movement. So they asked me like uh, if I wanted to do uh, uh, an installation for this uh, particular space. And uh, I grew up by the seaside and uh, what I find always surprising by the sea is like always different according to uh, weather parameters according if you go in the morning and the evening, according to the weather cast. So I created a, a data visualization that connects directly to a database uh, using Python and to retrieve like 11 parameters to uh, the system, such like humidity, weather cast, uh, the moon phase, uh, if it's day or night, the wind direction, the wind speed. And uh, actually like the piece evolves. So I connect myself to different cities in the world and I take those data in uh, real time and actually like uh, change like the, the the shape of the of the of the of the ocean. So this was like uh, and there's also a system that track uh, the people movement and actually interact uh, using the laser sensors.
So the aesthetic was like the few years ago was uh, very like uh, digital and the mesh, and then I, I continued to work on it to create like more like parameters and to give like more richness to the system. So is uh, getting like uh, into like something even more like um, uh, rich and can also like um, be. Uh, I'm thinking about now like adding more parameters to it to be able to even give it uh, more. Uh, more uh, possibilities to it. So this is one of the la latest versions I have. Uh, another project I did after this one, I was very interested about like the data visualization, and I was thinking about doing a performance and how I could uh, uh, perform uh, a piece that could be different each time. So I was always like interested about uh, cartography and the way like we can see the the world from above, uh, like with the drones, uh, also like pictures, uh, photography, but also like uh, from the um, cartography in general. So I created like a, a piece called Aerion. Aerion is the name of a drone that takes actually like real-time data from uh, Google Earth and translate, to, translate it into like uh, audiovisual compositions. And actually like the performance change each time because if I perform in Montreal, I will take the map of Montreal and then just like scan it and will make the drone travel uh, over it. And if I play in Japan and, and other places, like uh, it will take like the, the landscape from each place. So this is what I like about this performance, it's just always like I have uh, some work to do before presenting it, because I have to scan the, the, the space, and I'll show you how the, I use the technique just afterwards. This is one of the compositions, and another one. I just wanted to show you quickly how, how I do it. Actually, I use Google Earth uh, from my iPad usually, and I uh, just like uh, enter like the position of the, the place where I want to, uh, where I will perform. So if I put like Montreal, So I just like uh, zoom in and place uh, like uh, the camera the uh, like t uh, 500 meters from the from the ground, and actually in Google Earth you can uh, create like path and travel. So I just like uh, record a path uh, like of 100 kilometers around the city where I will play, and then it create like a, a video file and also I can do like image sequences. Then after I have another software called uh, Image Compositor Editor. So. Um, it's like a free software that you can uh, download, and you can create like a new pan panorama from video. So you can load actually the video, and the system will recognize like uh, uh, which pixel is near each pixels. So it will just output a huge like uh, resolution canvas of like almost like 50,000 by 50,000 pixels, and then I uh, take this image and I uh, in Touch Designer I uh, just like um, load it. I load it uh, in a, like a navigation system. And then with a joystick, I can just like uh, move, move uh, the camera around and uh, be able to uh, move in different places, uh, in altitude, in direction, in speed, and be able to uh, do my performance 
uh, uh, like flying over like different locations of the of the of the city of the of the landscapes, and I also like uh, create some zones. So the zones, according if it's like uh, flying over like a, a, a forest, a lake, or the sea or a city, I can create like a different variation in terms of images and also in terms of sound. So I create like a, the performance, like evolution is made with the joystick flying over like a different region of the of the place. And then this is uh, one, uh, one environment that I just show for the demonstration that I develop more envir environment according to uh, what the drone is flying, flying over. So for people who, who follow my work, I, I've been working a lot of with uh, musician, musician, uh, compo sound composer and musicians and also like performing art and, and, um, and also like a dancer and things like this. So sometimes like when you work with the electronic music, uh, it's kind of easy to, uh, to follow, like um, to make like sound analysis uh, according to the BPM, the tempo and, uh, and uh, things that are easy to then control the images. Um, but like two years ago, I went to Argentina for the Mutech uh, Festival and I had this collaboration with this uh, Argentinian uh, artist called uh, Nicola Melman that uses a lot of uh, acoustic uh, instruments and uh, his music is very like uh, melodic. So this is not like uh, kick drums or things that usually helps you to uh, generate content. So I had to find a way to, um, to do it uh, in a different way. And I, I, fly, I flew there and I didn't have anything ready. I, I, I prepared some stuff, but I, I realized it didn't work at all. So we had to find a solution to, uh, to make something interesting. So I'll just show you the video first. So we had the meeting in the studio, and then uh, we tried some stuff that didn't work. So I came back to the hotel, and uh, I, I had to find a solution to, um, to, uh, for the performance the day after. So I decided to actually like, uh, use, use this music as an as a audio signal and translate it into a 3D uh, mesh. So I just took like, the sound input with my sound card and then placed it into like, a... a Another component where I create, like, uh, I take the two different waves, uh, left and right, and create uh, 3D like uh, lines that actually like show the frequency of the sound, and then I, I put them together in, into like different like render, and then I manipulate them in, in a different way to create like uh, different variations. So I have like this first part of uh, of a controller with uh, like the the amplitude and the way I want to, uh, to, to display it. Also, I use the sound, uh, uh, the sound file directly into uh, Chop 2 to create uh, this kind of uh, white, uh, black and white gradient. I use a lot of uh, uh, texture control in my work to be able to uh, transform like a 3D mesh and create like different uh, movement of instances. And then I have uh, another like a component here where I have like a a grid of, uh, of uh, instances with different shape and different um, uh, different parameters, and I create uh, another like uh, a board with like um, this is like zero from uh, 400 uh, for like um, uh, the artist that created this kind of very easy uh, user interface to create a preset. And then uh, with this uh, interface, I, I realized that I could actually create like, a lot of different content uh, very easily. So. I like when the system is actually like look very simple, but when it gives a lot of uh, like possibilities of uh, of, uh, of content. So from like a very like simple waveform, I've been able to like uh, create like a lot of different uh, variation of uh, of uh, content that uh, really look like a digital painting. 
and I've been like uh, we've been performing together in different places, uh, and also I was very happy with the result because like the it was a really like uh, it's a real uh, improvisation system that can be different each time. So I don't even do presets, and sometimes I just lose the thread, but sometimes. Uh, I come back to his music and uh, there's also like a, as a visual artist sometimes it's more difficult to improvise but this system actually like helped me to uh, be able to lot, give a lot of different aesthetic according to the mood I am and also according to his music. He's also one artist that record as well uh, sound uh, field before like performing each time so that was also, also interesting to be able to, uh, to work in that, in that uh, direction. kind of uh, result you can get uh, using this system but also looks like very much like landscapes and uh So I work a lot with like texture and uh, had this uh, new project this year with the collaboration with a na nanotechnology group in Portugal called INL and they're actually like a researcher that have like an electron microscope that is able to uh, take pictures from atoms and I did a residency for one week with them uh, to see like the, the practice of work. And uh, what, they, uh, what, they, uh, what the material they found uh, using the microscope is like a, a black and white uh, uh, images that actually like, uh, show like, the identity of uh, an atom and its reaction into different environments. So they actually analyze uh, with the, another software, like the scale of, uh, of uh, the grayscale, to be able to determine like, this, uh, the identity of the atoms. So there, uh, I was like um, uh, working with them for one week and then I came back to my studio and I were, thought about this installation where I could just recreate the experience I had uh, working with them as a scientist and in the laboratory, uh, looking at the microscope and looking at those uh, atoms. So I created uh, like a microscope using a camera slider and a USB microscope that uh, could um, be like move on the X, Y, like translate, but also the plate can be uh, rotated. So I, I uh, just like put like different patterns on, the, on this plate and the user actually can uh, move around like the, the plate and also the camera slider to be able to uh, analyze different uh, part of, of the images. And uh, actually like the images is then like translated into like a, a macrocosmos like landscape uh, that react according to what the microscope uh, is looking at. So the result of the visual uh, looks very much like something like this. So always like moving and always like um, kind of uh, uh, taking like the different like grayscale pixels and to create like height map and uh, make uh, this kind of uh, uh, really like a macrocosmos landscape. Uh, this is like the installation. I did also like uh, another side is a, uh, like Vive helmet, a VR helmet, where the people actually like can see the atom in a, in a 3D. So they can place like also their face on the, on the, on the glasses and see actually the, the 3D uh, version of the atoms. Meanwhile, they are navigating uh, with the camera slider. So that was presented in uh, Generation, is an art center in Portugal, uh, which is in Raga, and uh, I'm still uh, working on it to make a new version uh, soon, uh, using maybe a Axis Draw plotter to be able to uh, draw at the same time. Uh, this is another video that, uh, that I'll show you. So that's almost all I wanted to present it, to just to show like uh, this kind of uh, uh, generative art and how I work uh, the different like content, even though they look different, they have like uh, same like uh, practice. So I don't know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Mathieu. Mm -hmm. 
Well, does anybody have questions for Mathieu? You? So are, are, are images coming live from that microscope there? Is yeah. that what that is? Uh, the microscope takes uh, grayscale images. And actually, I use like uh, fluid and also like a map to create like movement at, according to what the microscope is, is looking at. So like uh, it's actually like the practice they, they do as well. They just like take uh, like the differences between the white and the, and the black and determine like how, how the atom behave in such environment. So I, I use the practice to create the, an abstraction of it. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, a bit of a dumb technical question. Um, I'm very curious to know how you plan on translating what you're doing to be able to be drawn out on an axi draw. Well, the, uh, well the, the, the issue I had uh, was also like to create uh, the, the patterns, but it's also like very really precise, and I tried to do like digital print, but it was a bit like uh, difficult to uh, have a good result. So I thought about uh, using this kind of uh, plotter to be able to move the, slide, the camera around so it can move in uh, also like uh, Z and also like X uh, axis and also can be also more dynamic and also more like uh, precise in terms of uh, movement. And I also want to draw actually the uh, actual pattern using the axis, axis draw so it'd be even like more precise as I could co can coordinate both uh, pixels together. So you mean it's much more of an improbable system as opposed to just translating your topographies into SVG? Is that what you're proposing? Yeah. Yeah, it's totally. Nice. Um, so uh, uh, earlier in your uh, career, you were uh, doing, uh, um, you've done multiple dome projects. Yes. Uh, I wonder if it's still, um, a medium that interests you, and if it just depends on the opportunity you get, or how, how you feel about Dome as a setting for your work? Yeah, I mean, I think my work on, as a performance audiovisual composition is really uh, inspired by the Dome experience I had uh, when I did Dromos like five years ago. And uh, like actually, like the evolution of, uh, of the composition is really like uh, uh, inspired by, by this uh, kind of uh, immersive environment. Now the dome, I think I've done a lot, uh, five pieces in total, and uh, I, last time I found it a bit frustrated as I wanted to uh, get away from the geometry and more like this digital uh, aesthetic. I wanted to get more into like texture and, uh, mm. and uh, kind of uh, more like um, uh, organic uh, kind of shapes. And uh, I like domes, but I find a lot of uh, uh, limitation in terms of uh, what you can create. It's more about architecture, so I think uh, I went through like different kind of tests and uh, for now I'd like to, to leave it for a while. But now I have also like a VR helmet, so at the same time it's uh, also like the same, uh, the same technique and process. But uh, maybe think a bit more about uh, a strong concept about uh, not just like doing dome just to show like uh, what can be done in terms of uh, war effect, but maybe uh, doing something that uh, more like storytelling or things like this, I, I guess. Thank you. Uh, so for that Montreal Google Map project, um, I'm just kind of curious how you were generating those like white lines, those like sharp white lines. Like, what kind of data is that being like rendered from? Is that from the color or like some other external data? Yes, actually, I take the image texture and I divide it into like different uh, 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 different forms. So I use like a lot of tops to uh, make, maybe like make it black and white or or just like uh, focus on one certain colors. So according to this treatment, like the the mesh is distorted in different ways. So I change it like uh, according to the colors, according to the uh, like the black and white, the gray scale, and also like sometimes I create like as I say like some zone in in the map, so I know where I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm flying over like a forest, for instance, and then I change the treatment according to that, and also the sound. So I, I just play like also like uh, sometimes like uh, with uh, five six different zones, and uh, this helped me to create like presets 
So I know how my system will react more or less and uh, I just change it by navigating. Like I noticed some of like the heights were like taller than others as we were like going yes. through it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, I'm just kind of curious like how it knows like is it like random or? <laughs> if you see like a road for instance and nothing yeah. around uh, like the road would be like lower and the rest would be uh, higher. So I managed to create, like, uh, control my image texture in that way. So, like, the system will know that uh, uh, we'll, de we'll design the road in a certain way and not the rest. Uh, it's very abstract, everything, but sometimes it uh, can be more precise. Yeah, it's also, like, ongoing project that, uh, as the ocean project, it never ends. There's, like, so much possibilities, and when you start to get into data, you open, like, so much door that at the end you... Uh, you never, like, uh, I don't think I will finish one day, I guess. Yeah. Cool. That's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions for Mathieu? Okay. <laughs> Can you talk about um, moving away from sort of hard digital rendering to getting to more of the softer, kind of more painterly, textural uh, aesthetics that you have now? Uh, if, if I'm thinking about moving more into digital aesthetic? Oh, no, oh. just like uh, you were talking about how the earlier Wave project, it was kind of more wireframe and like the rendering yeah. is more hard lines. And now it seems like you've kind of moved to... Yeah, totally, yeah. I'm much more interested in texture now right. and uh, organic like uh, uh, forms rather mm -hmm. than... Uh, digital uh, like aesthetic when I used to do domes like the, at the beginning where I think it's very cold and also uh, uh, it's not because we've seen it already but I think like the software now like uh, using like the GPU can also like uh, uh, allows like to go into like different uh, uh, direction in real time and uh, be able to uh, manipulate like so many like instances and particles and then add the texture like post composing effect can create those uh, beautiful like a uh, painting and or, like a uh, granular like uh, effect which uh, mm -hmm. I really like and also like the resolution so you can go in 4k and uh, have these really precise uh, uh, details into the image yeah. nice. we have a question back here hi thank you so much for the talk could you talk a little bit about your process of composition for the MAPS project? Because you said that the audio for your solo AV sets were also generative and based on the map data. Yes. And then also kind of how your approach, just in terms of visual aesthetics change when you're doing your own solo AV sets versus collaborating. Thanks. Well, I, work, uh, I worked a lot of musicians, but I know also like how to uh, control like uh, Max MSP and uh, Ableton Live. So I work a lot since a long time using like sound analysis with Max MSP like patches into Ableton and listening to different like audio channels. Uh, usually it's more like the audio that goes to the visuals, but I like also like the, the opposites, the visual that go to the audio. So in this case, like uh, of Aerion, like I, I detect like the speed and also like the, the zone, uh, say like where the drone is flying over, and is actually like creating like uh, some kind of equalizer uh, that also like uh, uh, add some sound layers and just like uh, fade the other ones. Uh, that was um, that was the interesting part as well. Then I wanted like my, my previous idea was to get like a GPS data. And there is uh, this database called FreeSound where you can actually like retrieve a sound file according to the GPS data. So also like radio station of these kind of things. I really wanted to uh, be able to, um, to get some sound field according to the, to the locations uh, where the drone is flying over. But still like some ideas that I haven't time, had time to, to develop uh, now. But it's something that uh, I would like to do uh, in the future. Um, a, a different uh, side, uh, I was wondering how you were uh, uh, navigating the uh, artist's life and like since you like do a lot of performances, how you find like the time and the focus to like create new artworks and how you kind of balance uh, re reaching out and like creating new work. 
Uh, yeah, actually, I don't think I've been creating a new work for a while, but uh, my last one in Portugal uh, was my, my last piece. I also did a new one in Beirut uh, the, using um, the Kinect and the movement. Uh, well, I think like um, each, each new work is actually the end of the, the last one. So I recreate, like retake like the architecture I, 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 I built and then I just like push it in one direction or the other. Um, but it's true that uh, it's a lot of um, uh, travels and uh, very tiring to be uh, to travel uh, all the time. So it's very hard to have a routine to be able to actually focus on the, on something new or to just go deeper into like something. So uh, yeah, I mean this is also like a, a choice, and sometimes you don't uh, you just have uh, no choice. But uh, I will I think like for the until the end of the year I will uh, I will stay. Uh, Quiet, I guess. <laughs> I will try. Anybody have any more questions? Okay, Matthew, I think you're uh, Thank fini. You. Thank you so much. Happy <laughs> process.